What's up, guys? It's Colin here again with the TBR7 and the Dad Cheese. Check them out. It um, TBR7 has been great so far. Of course, there's its own little things. It um, I didn't have my keys for the last video, so now I'm going to show you all its startup and whatnot. It um, and I'm going to talk about some of the issues more in more in depth about what I had with this bike so far. And it was just basically just breaking in stuff. Moto Cheese on Instagram. This is just a little boot here. Of course, yeah, it looks ugly, but yeah. And, um, but uh, Moto Cheese on Instagram and his YouTube channel, he's absolutely awesome. He's been there to answer my questions right away with this stuff. And, and I thank him greatly for that. He's an awesome dude. And uh, he makes really good content. And I know I'll never be at the level of Moto Cheese, but, uh, but it's cool to uh, just to let people know what's going on with mine. And if I have any questions, I can ask y'all. If y'all have any questions, I might already dealt with it too. And, um, so let's go ahead and start just some things from, I guess we'll just go down a checklist or I'll just walk around the bike and see what comes to mind. And, um, carburetor. So with this carb, I never actually used the factory carb. The factory carb is somewhere in this garage. I don't want to show you the garage. It's a mess. I'm sorry guys. But, uh, but yeah, the carburetor, I went straight with the Makuni carburetor and, um, and I had trouble with it at first. It, um, for some reason it was sticking and I'll actually show you why it was sticking here in a second, but, um, it was running basically wide open and this pipe glowed red it got so hot and um luckily it wasn't anything crazy that damaged anything it was just that that was being held wide open the whole time and i'll come over here and show y'all what happened with that right in here on the carburetor there's that little lever it pulls sorry y'all can't really see so it pulls that lever you see here i can't really get to it for y'all yeah, so when you pull the throttle body though, it opens up a lever and that little metal pin you see in there got stuck on it. And it was holding it wide open to the wall and uh, and it was not idling correctly. And it turns out with the Makuni carburetor that I got, it's like a 26, I'm not sure the model number. It um, The only way you can really adjust the idle is right up here. And there was a bolt that was in my way of adjusting the idle. So we ended up cutting the bolt off. <laughs> and. Uh, and that ended up working, so, uh, so I'm definitely thankful for that. It, um, and I'm not saying that this is a problem you'll have. I think it's only because I switched to that carburetor right out the box. But um, a lot of people are saying the jet wasn't right. That carburetor just so happened to have the 110 jet already in it, and it saved me a bunch of headaches. So that's the way I went. And um, let's see here. What next? Chain. Chain was extremely tight right out the box, guys. But I used some chain lube, and uh, after riding it for the 20 miles that I have, Gosh, it was so tight. And now I've got some play that I needed desperately. So it uh, seems like the chain actually straightened itself out. And I did do one little upgrade real quick. I'll show it to y'all. It's not really an upgrade. It's kind of rednecked out, but it works a lot better. So I switched to a maintenance free battery and trying to get this thing going, it, uh, it ended up killing the battery. So um, the kickstart is a pain to use sometimes on these. So what I ended up doing was is for whenever I do need to pop off that battery, added a port in here, went through the side of this little storage case here. And um, I guess the point of that is to be waterproof. I guess it's not waterproof anymore, but it serves a better purpose for me now because I've got my little tool bag back here anyway. So I don't really, don't really need for that to, to stay that way. And kickstart, yeah, the kickstart's over here. Kickstart is tremendously tough to kick. The compression in this bike is so high. It um, and that's I mean it's not bad. It's just it's it's hard to kick. It uh when it's warm it's easy to kick. When it's warm you get like one two kicks it started. Whenever it's cold, uh, good luck. Um, you might as well just roll start it. Um, or just throw your battery on the charger. For some reason it's not starting. But run over here to this side. Um, all right so gear shifter um what happens is is first through fifth are absolutely fine now i had trouble with first at the beginning and um it just broke in and then i asked everybody on facebook there's a hawk 250 enduro group on facebook it's for basically everything that falls in that category and those people are awesome and um and they told me it was just breaking and of course i had to ask moto cheese because i really 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 trust his input and, uh, and he said it's it's normal i was having trouble with neutral too he says it's basically just the, the clutch grabbing and uh and it'll it'll uh i hope i said that right moto cheese knows what's right but uh i don't know if i understood it right but yeah it seems like it's just part of break in was what he had told me and um 
and yeah everything seems to be going absolutely phenomenal these mirrors kind of suck but um but i guess it's better to have mirrors than not to you know it's like okay. it's going but uh but yeah it's doing really really well so i'll go ahead and get this guy started for y'all so y'all can see because i've actually got the key this time so let me back out a little bit on my zoom here all right all right Very neutral make sure yeah she's a neutral all right well i'll go ahead and show you all the start yeah and she is idling perfect yeah it seems a little low now i am on the hill but yeah it just it sounds like it's supposed to you guys it uh it does great it um Hopefully within the next little bit, I'll have a GoPro or something and I can show y'all some, some on road. I'm not really feeling holding my, holding my phone. Now I haven't really got this bike over 40 yet. Reason being is I'm breaking it in. I'm not trying to, to, uh, to widen it out. This is actually going to be a little bit of a commuter bike. It, um, no highways or nothing, but I want it to last. So I want to make sure I do it the right way. But, um, yeah, this bike, it, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I still can't believe it was twelve hundred and eighty dollars shipped to my door from q9 and q9 is awesome guys make sure if y'all are in the market for this kind of bike make sure you check them out they uh they've been extremely helpful they're sending me over my title information now. i mean my my mco uh what do you call it uh manufacturer certificate of origin and um that's what i used to get my title everybody that i've talked to in north carolina hasn't had any trouble with it either so i'm um, super excited for that get a tag on it and just start riding but um but yeah y'all are awesome this is uh tau tau tbr7 if y'all have any questions, please let me know. I might know the answer. If you don't, then I'll ask around for the answer because I might eventually need to know the answer to that question too. But, um, yeah, so this is the bike. And, um, I appreciate y'all watching. Y'all are awesome. And, um, and hopefully if anybody's in North Carolina in a triad area, just let me know. And, um, and we can talk if you're looking to get one or if you already got one and you want to go do tau-tau things. Just, uh, just let me know. Hope to see y'all soon.